Perfect. So welcome to today's webinar all about aquatic invasive species in Alberta. My name's Robin and I work at Bow Habitat Station in Calgary. Now if you haven't been here, we're kind of like a science center, but everything is focused on nature in Alberta. So visitors that come down can learn all about Alberta's ecosystems, air, landscapes, water, wildlife, and fish. And did you know that you are also part of Alberta's ecosystems as well? Everything that we do impacts the air, water, plants, and animals. And by learning more about Alberta's environment and ecosystems, we can learn how to think, plan, and act in ways that keep our environment healthy for all of us to enjoy and um, really to help the environment thrive. So today's webinar is going to run for about a half an hour. And I just wanted to start off our session by saying um, that we all respectfully acknowledge that we're joining um, well, myself, I'm joining from Treaty 7 Territory in Calgary this afternoon, and I'd like to acknowledge the many First Nations and Métis whose footsteps and gatherings have marked these lands for centuries. We honour and respect the Elders past, present, and future. So if everybody can just take a quick moment, um, let's acknowledge the Indigenous people of the regions that we find ourselves in today. Okay, so uh, before we get started with the bulk of the webinar, I also wanted to give everybody a crash course in Zoom. So I apologize if this is review for you, but we will be using a couple functions today. Um, we are in webinar mode, so while you can hopefully see and hear us, we can't see or hear you. So we'll be um, using the chat function down at that black bar at the bottom of your screen today, as well as the Q&A function. So if you had any questions or comments as we go, please use those features and um, I'll be monitoring the chat and jumping in and interrupting our presenter to get those questions answered. And we'll do our best to answer as many questions as possible during the webinar today. Now the other feature we will be using, again down in that black bar at the bottom of your screen, is the poll feature. And this is a fun tool. It's um, like a little quiz. So we're going to actually practice doing that now. So I'm going to launch our first poll here. And you should see a dialogue box popping up on your screen that says, have you ever visited Bow Habitat Station? So you can go ahead and vote now. Excellent, I'll give people a couple more seconds here. Perfect, so um, I will share the results with you as well. So we have a few of you who have visited, so I hope you come back and see us again soon. We are reopening the whole building shortly and one who has not yet been to visit us, so we hope you can join us sometime in the future. So that poll dialog box will stay up on your screen. You're welcome to close it after each poll. It'll pop up again when we relaunch our polls throughout the webinar. Or if you wanted to keep it up on your screen, you can just move it off to the side as well so it doesn't interfere with what you're seeing up there. So today we are joined by aquatic invasive species technician Paige Kuzmarski, who is going to start off by sharing a little bit about what she does day to day during her job and then help us discover some of Alberta's aquatic invasive species. So welcome Paige, we'll let you take it from here. Awesome, thanks Robin. Uh, so everyone, thanks for coming. A uh, little bit about me is that I am an aquatic invasive species technician. My job is to help control invasive species that we find in Alberta. And I do this by going out into the field sometimes or by telling people about them at different events or with webinars like this. Uh, so with that, let's just kind of jump right in. Um, just a little quick agenda of what we're gonna talk about. Uh, first up, we're just gonna cover what are invasive species. We're going to meet three of Alberta's aquatic invasive species, and then we're going to figure out what you guys can do to help and any, answer any questions that you may have. Uh, so what are invasive species? An invasive species can be a plant or animal species that is not from here, meaning they are coming from places where they have lived for a very long time and invading. You can kind of think of them like aliens coming and landing on Earth and taking over. Of course, they're not 
we're not talking about aliens actually coming to Earth, but being moved from one continent or one place to another. Um, so it's so easy to move all over the world today because of ships, planes, trains, that kind of thing. And this also makes it very easy for invasive species to move around. So what makes an invasive species invasive? Um, so like we just mentioned, they're introduced from somewhere else. Uh, they come to a place that they're not born from or not born in and move to a different area. Um, we also see that these species invade areas where something that eats them or natural predators don't live. So they can very quickly go from being just a few species to many more. Uh, we also see that these species can reproduce really quickly and can handle a lot of bad conditions um, which harm the ecosystem that they're introduced to. These are kind of the primary traits that make invas invasive species hard to control uh, in a new area and what makes them very invasive. So the traits that we just mentioned have big consequences and those consequences affect the environment, the economy, as well as humans and wildlife. Uh, so they affect the environment and change it in a bad or very negative way. So when an invasive species comes in, it alters the environment, usually through uh, the food chain or from disease. But we can see in this picture on the left that mussels have completely taken over an entire beach and it's almost unusable. Uh, we also see that they can end up costing us a lot of time and money. In the middle picture here, we see an invasion of fish where we've tried multiple different ways to remove them because they're in an area where they're not supposed to be. Um, and this is very expensive and time consuming. They also carry diseases that make us or other animals sick. So in the picture on the right, uh, that is pale yellow iris, which is an invasive plant. And it's actually toxic to horses if they eat it. And if humans touch it, it can burn our skin if we don't have any protective gloves on or anything like that. And Paige, we just have a quick question. Um, can you go back one slide? Back, yep. Just to this one? Yeah, just wondering what species of fish are in that middle photo there. Uh, so those are actually goldfish. And we've that's a population in St. Albert outside of Edmonton here. Perfect, thank you. No problem. So let's just meet uh, three examples of invasive species that are on Alberta's watch list. Uh, sometimes it's pretty hard to tell which species are invasive just by looking at them. So let's try and go through a little quiz poll thing that we did at the beginning uh, to, to see if uh, you guys can tell the difference. And with these examples, you can be an expert and be on the lookout for us. So between these two, uh, A and B, which do you think is invasive in Alberta? We'll give people five more seconds to vote here. Awesome. So you guys, actually, it is uh, B that is invasive. So we had a, half of you think that A is, but that is actually a native species that is uh, Banff spring snails, which is found in Alberta near Banff. Um, and Chinese mystery snail on the right hand side is the invasive one. So it is invasive because it competes with the native snails in the province. Um, it has a kind of trap door like feature. So that little flap in the bottom right hand corner beside the toonie um, allows it to be protected uh, from animals that want to eat it and other bad conditions like snow or freezing. 
So lots of native sm snails don't have this feature. Um, so this invasive species has a better chance to live and take over if bad conditions are around and there's predators around. Um, as well, they have lots of babies very quickly, which can increase their population and kind of clog pipes or any sort of water systems that we have. Um, they also live out of water for up to four weeks, so basically a month, which means that they can move very easily between different water bodies. So right now we don't have any tools to control them. Um, so we need to make sure that we're not moving them between a certain area, otherwise they might start a new population. Um, as well, they can carry diseases and germs. Uh, so if we ate this snail, it could make humans pretty sick. So let's go through another example. Um, between A and B here, which do you think is invasive? All right, so one of you guys got it right. Both A and B are invasive. Um, they, on the right hand side, we have quagga mussels, and then on the left, we have zebra mussels. So both of those are invasive in the province as well as across Canada. Um, they are very invasive because they are filter feeders, which means they clear the water. So up to a liter per day per mussel. And if you look in that bottom right hand picture beside the pen, you can see how tiny they are. So for one small little mussel to filter that much water is a lot. <laughs> um, so when the water is clean like that, lots of plants grow, but then we see a lot uh, less fish and plankton to live in that environment. And we want um, an equal ecosystem across the board. So it's not good to have just mussels there. Um, we also see that zebra and quagga mussels can produce up to a million eggs per year per female. Um, so they can take over water bodies, lakes, systems like that very quickly. Uh, they attach to any hard surface. So any attached muscle is an invasive muscle. Native muscles do not attach to things. So you can see in this top right hand picture, this species is just clinging right onto that rock there. Um, and they can live up to 30 days out of water, which makes it very hard to remove and control if they do become attached. Um, also, when there's so many of them, they can clog up water pipes, just like those snails did, and that can cost us up to $75 million a year. And so since they attach to any hard surface, any gear or boat that you leave in the water can get muscles attached to them. Uh, so that can break down your equipment, your boats, and that's not the greatest as well. Um, these shells of mussels also can end up on beaches where people walk around and play, and that can hurt your feet or even your pet's feet. So let's go through one last poll here. Um, between these two species, A and B, which do you think is invasive? We will give folks about five more seconds to vote on this one. All right, and so you guys are majority correct. B is the invasive species here. Um, and that is the goldfish that I mentioned in that previous slide. Um, a is actually a short head red horse and that is a native fish in Alberta. So the reason goldfish are invasive is because they eat anything and everything they can fit in their mouths. 
Um, they make the water very dirty by stirring it up and going into the dirt at the bottom there. And so there's not much food for other species. There's not much nice habitat or homes. Uh, so they quickly take over an area. As well, they have no natural predators or animals that eat them. So they're very hard to control with bringing in the new species. Um, and they have babies very quickly. So without chemicals, it takes a lot of time and money to control this species. Um, that picture on the top left is also from St. Albert, just like that one in the previous slide. And we tried scooping them out. We tried electrofishing. We tried draining the water down to having just a couple inches and then letting it freeze over winter um, and nothing got rid of them. So we ended up using chemicals, but this takes a lot of our time and a lot of money to try and control this species. Um, as well, they can carry germs and diseases and transfer them to other fish in the water body. They also carry a bacteria in their stomachs that can cause blue-green algae in water. So that can make humans and your pets pretty sick. So those are just a few invasive species that we have um, on our watch list for the province, but invasive species can be found all over. And we have a list of about 52 species that we watch for in Alberta, and we have found populations as far north as Fort McMurray. Um, so many species are surviving and having babies even through our super cold winters. So luckily, not all the species we've talked about are here for now. So those ones that we mentioned, uh, mussels are not found in Alberta, but they're close by in the states below us in Montana, as well in Manitoba, a couple provinces uh, east. Chinese mystery snail is found in only one location in the province, and we're working to make sure that it stays there and we can control it from there and not spread it to any other water bodies. And finally, goldfish are found in over 50 locations around Alberta. So in that map on the right hand side, all those orange dots are actually goldfish. So where did these species come from? Um, there are lots of ways that species can get into the province. The main ways that we're seeing is that people are dumping their pet fish tanks if they don't want them, maybe it's for cultural reasons, um, or they are sticking to boats and gear we use to play outside. So in this photo here, we have someone dumping their fish tank um, into a natural water body. We don't want that. And then we also have on the picture on the right, a propeller of a boat that is covered with mussels. And that came from a different province and we stopped it on the Alberta border before coming into our water bodies. So what is it that we can do to help stop these species from coming into Alberta? There's actually lots of things that you can do to help prevent the spread. Um, one of those is taking action. And we can do that through clean drain dry. Um, so always making sure that your gear, your boats, anything that touches the water is cleaned, drained, and dried before you leave. Um, and that is number one for us. If you're a gardener, we would love for you guys to be plant-wise and only plant native species in your garden. And also maybe learn more uh, which species are invasive or not. And if you do see one that you're not sure about, to report them to us because they can cause problems like this picture on the right. Uh, so this is pale yellow iris again, and that has taken over a wetland. Um, even though it's such a pretty flower, it's that toxic one and is not great for the environment. As well, you can don't let it loose. So never dump your fish tanks, pets or plants in nature. Instead, give it back to the pet store, to a friend, uh, maybe to a school or a community league, uh, just as long as you're not dumping it into natural water bodies. That is number one as well. Um, you can also learn more about the area and environment that you live in, um, and that will help you know more about threats like invasive species. So get familiar with your ecosystems and the native species nearby. 
Um, a great place to do this would be at the Bow Habitat Station in Calgary, like where uh, Robin was talking about where she works. Um, you can learn about water-based ecosystems by exploring the food webs, uh, who eats who in those ponds there. These food webs are kind of just mini examples of how plants and animals depend on one another and other factors being uh, in the environment they use to live. And then, so now it's your turn to kind of get outside and explore a local e ecosystem and put your knowledge to the test. Usually we have Creek Fest in Fish Creek Park, uh, but this time because of the pandemic, we are limiting it to this reimagined webinar. Um, so we came up with a little scavenger hunt for you guys to use and try out. Uh, so you can download this page um, and head out to Fish Creek Park, or if you don't live in Calgary, that's no problem. Um, you can see how many of these things you can find in a local park along a lake or a river in an area by you. So once you've found everything on the scavenger hunt list, you can actually email it to us, uh, email your completed list to the Bow Habitat Station and win a prize. Uh, so the hunt, the, the hunt list will be available to download after this webinar uh, on the Bow Habitat Station's Facebook page. And so if anyone has any questions after all of that information, please feel free to ask them in the chat box. I'd love to answer them for you. Um, so we'll give you guys a few minutes there. So Paige, we do have a few questions coming in. So um, maybe as people are thinking of any other ones, I'll just start with the ones we have so far. Um, so one of them is, you had mentioned the Chinese mystery snail is only found one place in Alberta. Are you able to share where that is? Yeah, so it's actually found in Lake McGregor, uh, which I believe is just south of Calgary. Um, so we only have one location there, but we're working hard to make sure that it stays there. We actually are the first um, place in Canada to get a CD3 machine, and this will help people clean their gear when leaving a water body. And so that's pretty exciting for Chinese mystery snail. And what is a CD3 machine? Um, it kind of cleans your gear. It's just a stationary machine that we have set up at the boat launches in Lake McGregor. Um, and that'll just help, uh, help clean your gear. Great. Um, another question we have is, do I have to clean drain and dry my kayak if I'm paddling from the Elbow River to the Bow River? So changing uh, rivers during a single paddling trip? Um, so with that one, the Elbow River is connected to the Bow River, but I think it's always good practice to clean drain dry between water bodies. Um, in that case, it would be fine because you're in the same system, um, but just to get in the habit of doing it is always recommended. Okay, and another one that came in is, can I use my goldfish as bait next time I go fishing instead of flushing it down the toilet? Um, no, <laughs> please no. So just because your fish might be dead uh, doesn't mean it couldn't carry diseases as well. So putting it back into a water body could spread that. Um, as well, we don't want to encourage using goldfish as bait or any other species that aren't usually bait as bait. <laughs> okay, and um, one last question here so far is, I've heard there's an AIS canine team. Where can I find them? So Paige, maybe can you tell us what the canine team does as well? Yeah, for sure. So we have um, three dogs that are on the canine team and they sniff out muscles at invasive um, or sorry, at aquatic invasive species stations that we have around on the borders of the province. And so those inspect watercrafts coming in and out. And so sometimes that canine team goes up to those stations and will help the technicians there find mussels or other invasive species that could be found on your boats. And so basically they're trained to sniff out quagga and zebra mussels, which is very cool. Um, they are kind of a roving crew, so they move around between different stations, so they're not actually located in one specific area. Uh, so you, 
probably won't be able to find them. It's more likely that you'll run into them. Um, maybe watch some of our face Facebook page posts and follow them around. But other than that, they kind of have their own little mission. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you so much, Paige, and thank you to everyone who was able to join us this afternoon. Oh, it looks like we have one more question here. Um, I'm sorry if this has already been addressed, but are crayfish in the irrigation lines invasive and can we catch them? Uh, so we have um, northern crayfish, which are native to the beaver watershed. Um, and only the beaver watershed in Alberta. Um, and so if you find them out of that area, they would be considered invasive. Um, people may harvest crayfish um, without a license, but by legal means. So using angling, dip netting, seine netting, or capturing by hand, uh, but keeping them and transporting live crayfish is illegal and any retained crayfish must immediately be killed to prevent the spread. Um, it's also illegal to use live crayfish as bait. Perfect, thanks Paige. So um, I don't see any other questions coming in, but if you do think of anything in the, as you mull over what we've talked about today, please do not hesitate to email Bow Habitat Station. It's located on that scavenger hunt list as well. Our email's right on there, and we can get in touch with Paige to track down the answers for you. So with that, we will wrap up today's webinar, and I just want to remind people to check out Bow Habitat Station's Facebook page to download that scavenger hunt and uh, get started learning about aquatic invasive species and terrestrial invasive species in your local ecosystem. Um, I do also want to say thanks for participating in Creekfest Reimagined. There's a lot of great events coming up all week. Um, some of them are virtual and there's some stuff happening in the park itself today. Um, and just to shamelessly plug our own webinar, we have a second webinar coming up on Thursday about whirling disease in Alberta. So we hope to see you there and enjoy the rest of the event. Bye everybody.